Um, sure. So um, this is a set of um, benchmarks we ran um, on a set of uh, pretty common everyday um, uh, sample queries and scenarios um, on Humio and Elasticsearch. Um, I'll go into the details, but first just I won't give a full bio. I'm Richard Whaling. Um, I'm an engineer at Spantry Technology Group. We're a boutique consulting firm right here in Chicago. Um, I work with Spark, Kafka, Akka every day. Uh, if you also like those or things like Kubernetes, DCOS, Mesos, uh, Chef, Terraform, um, come see us. Either find me, find Cedric by the camera, or Justin in red next to Cedric. Um, we're around, um, and we're always looking for, uh, for people into all of the, the same stuff we are. Um, so, uh, but I'd also add Elasticsearch is really our bread and butter. We work with Elasticsearch every day. Uh, we love it. Um, and the, I want to just give the caveat that these benchmarks are by design a comparison of, of apples and oranges. Um, now, um, I think everyone knows that it is actually quite possible to compare apples and oranges, right? Apples are, are, are red, oranges are orange, so on and so forth. You, you don't do this to determine, well, are apples better than oranges or vice versa? But you, you do it because you can learn something about apples and something about oranges in the process. Um, and that's sort of the, the, the goal of this. I have about 10 slides. Um, so ba basically, it's to, to bring out the architectural differences, show what's, what's fundamentally different about Humio um, and, and its design from a system like Elasticsearch, but also from that, you, that you'll find in comparison to any other system based on an inverted index. Um, of which there are plenty, um, and we can also generalize a little further towards the end just about, well, well how do you select a, a, a log analysis system uh, more broadly? Um, and yeah, th this is really designed to, to show what's, what's, what's fun and special about Humio. Um, so, um, right, just to, to, to ground this, right, Elasticsearch um, is built on top of Lucene. You put in, put in, it processes it very, very heavily uh, to create these inverted index segments. Um, then it's going to be uh, aggressively using as much CPU and memory as it can gobble up to, to compact and merge those in the background. It's sort of an <coughs> ongoing uh, merge tree kind of process. Um, and then it uses lots of really um, pretty elaborate query optimization, um, often on the metadata and statistics in that, that inverted index structure itself, um, where it can to produce uh, really, really fast aggregations um, against that index um, without having to actually traverse every, every, every record in it, right? That's, that's one of the fundamental, like, awesome Elasticsearch tricks. Um, Humio's radically different. It's, um, uh, as, as Creston was saying, it's, uh, it's basically a, a time series database for, for text. It has an, a, basically an append-only compressed log data structure. Um, and what, what's really neat about it is it has this very explicit notion of, of time and especially of, of, of now, that, that all the data up to right now is, is streamed into these registered live queries. Um, but then there's also the, cap the capacity to, to do all these historic queries um, at the same time and, and slightly different characteristics for those um, uh, two kinds of queries. Um, which we'll get into really shortly, actually. Um, so just for like the design of the test, um, the idea was to simulate a nice high volume kind of, uh, of, of log analysis scenario. So imagine you have a cluster, maybe it's the size of what Creston was talking about, 50 nodes or something like that, generating 100 gigabytes of logs a day. Does, I, don't, I, I don't know if you all think that sounds like a ton of logs a day or like not enough. That's entirely a matter of taste, but I think, I think this is a fair amount for a, a decent stress test of systems like this. Um, we're focusing on these aggregation-oriented queries uh, that are really going to push like I/O. <coughs> it's pretty trivial to get the first ten or hundred uh, like v occurrences of anything, um, but the the kinds of queries where you actually have to really go deep through like the the, the full bulk of these logs, I think, is where it gets really fascinating. Um, and then we are focusing on um, use cases relating to streaming updates, the kinds of things you'd have when you have a query that might be feeding a, a dashboard or an alerting system or something like that. Um, and then we, we used equivalent hardware for both. Um, uh, it's, it was uh, eight CPUs, about 61 gigs of RAM. Um, someone here can probably remember what AWS instance class that is from memory, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> to Excel, thank you. Um, and we, we synthesized 100 gigs of Apache um, log lines um, from a, like a, for this waxy.org data set, which was like a, like a 2004 pre-YouTube viral video sensation. Do you remember the Star Wars kid with the lightsaber? That, that um, if anyone is old enough to remember that. 
Um, which, but it, but it's interesting because uh, it it has a basically for the time like a really like large and diverse set of data in a in this consistent Apache logline formula. You have hundreds of thousands of unique visitors and um, tens of thousands of <coughs> unique referring URLs and all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, and then. Um, uh, just in terms of like instrumentation, we used uh, FileBeat to upload the data um, to both systems to, to Humio and to Elasticsearch, right? Um, <laughs> and we used Telegraph to run queries against them throughout the upload process, and also to do instrumentation um, on the, the the containers themselves that are running. Um, so yeah, let's look at some numbers. So um, right, because we put this through uh, <laughs> through FileBeat, um, the actual numbers going, o the actual amount of data going over the wire was a little bigger um, than 100 gigs. It went up to I think about 240 something, uh, 246 I th gigabytes I think, um, just in terms of bytes. Um, and what you can see first of all is that uh, Humio ingested all of those <laughs> log lines um, about three times faster than Elasticsearch did. Um, hu a sing the single instance of Humio was ingesting about nine gigabytes um, an hour, and Elasticsearch maxed out at 3.3. Um, likewise, if you look at the, the the disk usage graph up at top, up at the top, um, you'll see that Elasticsearch um, was eventually up at 188 gigabytes. So larger than the original pre before processing size of the logs, um, and only about seventy percent smaller than the full like over the wire JSON representation. Whereas Humio got it down to twenty four gigabytes, um, and that really makes a difference, right? That's um, like that's about an order of magnitude, uh, t ten times difference. Um, uh, there's also really interesting differences in the CPU usage and the memory usage. Um, so one thing that was really interesting is that Humio um, hummed right along at 200% uh, CPU usage, so just two CPUs never went above about 263% uh, while we were doing ingestion, but once we actually finished, uh, it just totally uh, coasted uh, and had very little else to do. Whereas you can see Elasticsearch is um, doing garbage collections uh, basically constantly um, and eating every ounce of CPU and memory um, going on. Um, in terms of memory usage, Humio started out at I think about 1.3 gigabytes of memory. Um, that's including off, uh, that's not just heap, but it's also off heap, the page cache, um, things of that nature. Uh, we were measuring memory usage from outside the container, right? Um, so that's a very all-inclusive memory usage. Um, whereas Elasticsearch went right up to, um, I think, what, about 53, yeah, 56, 57 gigs um, uh, of RAM. So, so based on this, we can see that even on these, uh, this relatively compact system for, for this amount of data, we, we have a lot of headroom, and we probably could have gotten the same results um, from Humio on a smaller instance, like, a, like an R3x large um, with like four CPUs and half as much RAM. Um, so uh, as for the actual queries, so we came up with a suite of four queries to actually test this. Um, the first was just to count all the lines in the log. Um, uh, the second was to group them by the, stat the HTTP status code, right, um, which are pretty easy. And then the harder ones were group it by request URI. And another was don't aggregate at all, but just uh, get me some results and filter by a certain user agent value. Um, and the idea was so, um, is really about the, the cardinality of an aggregation. Uh, the count has a cardinality of one, it's just a number. Uh, group by status code is going to return a, a count of all the unique HTTP status codes of which there's about, what, 20, 30 or something like that. Uh, whereas request URIs for a, a data set like this um, is like hundreds of thousands. So just um, keeping that full data set in memory is um, non-trivial at least. Um, and likewise, filtering by user agent is just traversing the, the full size of the log. Um, so what was really interesting is that, um, so with Elasticsearch, all of these are broadly linear um, with the, the, the amount of data in the system, right? Um, but uh, with Humio, with these uh, sort of registered as live queries, uh, we were getting results between five and 10 milliseconds um, for the count all, um, about 30 to 40 milliseconds for grouping by status code. Um, whereas um, filter by user agent and request URI were around 250 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds. Um, so this is running about, uh, in this case, 4,000% faster than Elasticsearch for, for most of these, um, which is uh, pretty substantial. Um, the, 
I, th I think I've covered most of everything on this slide. Um, but I, just to, to lay all these numbers out, it's in in a lot of these uh, common use cases, there is like a like a, a factor of three to five to, to, to ten in terms of like the efficiency of Humio's usage of um, uh, of, a, of a given node's resources. Um, there, there was one place where it's a little different, um, just where Humio's different um, query model and indexing model d does make a difference. So with the historic queries, um, Humio's not doing any indexing. It's not a, it's not a search engine. Um, so when you build a complex pipeline and you are grepping through uh, 100 gigabytes of logs, it's going to process those at three to five gigabytes a second, which is really fast. But that does mean if you've got 100 gigs of data, that'll take about 20 seconds. Um, and by comparison, I think Elasticsearch came out to like, I think 12.94 seconds uh, for some of the really hard, um, like out of cache, like searches against the, the, whole, um, the, the whole data set. Um, the one thing I'd add as an observation though, is that you're really talking about interactive ad hoc um, use cases for your logging systems here. Um, and when you're talking about interactive use, it's not just the time between when you hit the, the enter button and submit the query and when you get the result. If this is an interactive um, search, the time you spend typing in your query and formulating it uh, counts also. Um, and for people who grew up using Unix pipelines, Humio's uh, query language actually gives it a <coughs> bit of a, a boost there. Um, and then the, the last thing I really wanted to call out is, um, again, because there's no indexing, there's not a heavy like data modeling step. Um, there's, no, there's no notion of really a data migration or like a schema in Humio. Whereas if anyone here has a lot of like operational expertise with Elasticsearch, you'll know that Elasticsearch can do almost anything, but a lot of the more difficult things you can do will require you to either re-index your data, set up a scripted field, um, and the, the, the tooling and just operational know-how around doing those correctly is uh, really quite challenging. Um, so I guess this brings me to my conclusion. Um, and rather than just saying one or the other is the winner, I think I, we've at least illustrated how Humio behaves differently than Elasticsearch. Um, and that, like, to be clear, like, uh, log analysis is a hard problem. There's a lot of compelling solutions out there. Um, beyond Humio and Elasticsearch, there's things like Splunk, there's things like Sumo Logic, there's SSHing into your server and grepping through the, the logs. That's an option too. And there, there, there are reasonable trade offs in all of these. Is horizontal scalability a concern, or can you fit everything on a single box um, if, if your cluster is the right size and your system's efficient, uh, efficient enough? Um, does ease of use matter to you? Like, who, whose ease of use matters? Is it really targeted at um, people looking at dashboards or at people doing interactive use um, and looking through these, these logs in bulk? Um, are you concerned about what kind of computations you can express um, and what the, the expression language of that system gives you? Um, and are you concerned about cost? And that's cost considered in the, the broadest possible sense, not just how much does the software cost, how much does the server cost, how much does the operational staff to run the server cost. Um, uh, they're, they're, these are all very reasonable concerns, right? Um, but um, that being said, just uh, subjectively, uh, I, I found Humio to be uh, really uh, pretty impressive in terms of just uh, actually uh, running these ludicrously fast queries, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my talk. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.